Some of you are stuck here in this story a second time now. But I have this friend down in Boulder. Her name is Jerry, it was Jerry Moore. And I have some other friends down in that same church. And Jerry Moore was the consummate church lady. She had her hands in everything, and she made sure the kitchen worked right with all the right labels. And she made sure the kids acted right. And she made sure the kitchen and the kids did not come together ever. Because that would cause havoc. Some friends of mine down there, they, they really liked Jerry Moore, and they, they were starting a family with children, and they wanted their children to be able to grow up in a church with church ladies like that. And so one day they came home, and they heard on their answering machine, Jerry Moore has died. So they had dinner and talked about their memories of her, and they were surprised, because she really wasn't that old. She seemed to be in good health. They talked about her, and a couple days later they went to the funeral, and they sat um, one step in front of where y'all are sitting, like next to the back row there. And, and people started to file in, and eventually someone, someone came and sat on the, the pew in front of them. And, oh my, it was, it was Jerry Moore. She came and sat down at her own funeral. So who was in the coffin up front? They were so confused. Turns out that church has another person in the congregation named Geraldine Mordhorst. And so really the answering machine said Jerry Mordhorst died instead of Jerry Moore has died. And they were shocked. They couldn't figure it out. I mean, they, they couldn't wrap their brains around it. And this story is a silly segue for the story of Easter. But I think it points us to, you can imagine being in their situation in the back of the pew, being confused, having no idea how it happened. And I think you can imagine being in Mary's situation, coming to the tomb and just not knowing what's going on. Where is he? Who took them? Are they defacing his body? Or is it my friends that they sneak out here last night and they're, they're honoring him in some way? It, it, couldn't be, it couldn't be any other explanation. I don't understand at all what happened that morning 1,981 years and 19 days ago. We can kind of get it just about right. I don't understand what happened. But I can appreciate, and I can appreciate and try to kind of live into the, the, the truth that some way it can shape my life. I can try to appreciate just how confusing and scary and incomprehensible it must have been for her to see an empty tomb or for the disciples to hear that he ain't dead yet. I can appreciate in a very similar way how remarkable it is for anyone to, to, to see the, the grasp of darkness and death just be taken away and new life be formed. I don't know what happened that morning but I like to think it's more than just a story of divine CPR on one day, one person, one tomb, one death. I don't understand what happens when, well, this has happened in your life. I'm sure someone in your life has, well, they're suffering from addiction problems. And they're just spiraling downward with despair and the, and the pain and, and the hurting other people around them. And somehow in that downward spiral, they discover some glimmer of hope. They see something from their old self, or they see the future of what they could be. And that inevitable wasting away starts to turn step by step. And they come out of that pit as a new person. I don't understand that. And I don't understand that moment of reconciliation when two people who just have so much conflict, they fight all the time, and somehow one forgives and one accepts forgiveness and reconciliation happens. We live in a world with so much violence and so much anger and so much pride and excuses. Every day, young men are shot in this country. Everywhere. Every day, young women have to deal with their confidence being destroyed by their friends. Every day, adults find some way to divide themselves and fight over some faction. And somehow, through all that junk, once in a while, two people on opposite sides come together and make something beautiful. Somehow, people look past those boundaries and those walls that hold them apart. And in some eternal Easter moment, they roll away the stones that cause so much divisiveness. And they discover new life. And they make new life. Some of that, I can give a little bit of explanation to. I can, I can kind of point to this factor or that factor, but I don't understand what's really going on. When a, when a child and a, and, a, and a mother have been fighting forever, and all of a sudden something happens. They go off to college, they come back, they love each other. I don't understand what happens when someone comes to grip with their racism and their homophobia, and they, and they understand that that was wrong, and all of a sudden they're compassionate and fighting for justice. I don't understand how it is that 
People are going through chemo and all of a sudden the scan comes back and it says clear and everyone can cry clean tears. I don't understand what happens when someone, and it's, when someone in their relationship finally discovers a way out of that abuse. That takes courage. I don't know how they do it. I don't understand how the church, the big C, the church, all the churches, we've been getting a rap, deservedly so, for hurting and being mean to a lot of people. I don't understand how it is that something, some seed is still growing out of that and that it's the church that can still help and serve and love people and shine a light on being the body of Christ. I suppose it takes time. All this stuff takes time in our life. It takes struggle. It takes hard work. But I don't understand how hopelessness can turn into joy. But am I the only one who's witnessed restoration in the world? Am I the only one in my own life who has felt like I've been in a grave and found new life. Like the disciples that morning, I can't understand Easter. But like Mary, I can feel the mix of shock and excitement and surprising raw joy. I don't know what happened, but I am still in awe whenever it is that I can catch my attention to something new and fresh. Whenever something remarkable grows out of the mundane, whenever someone seizes their once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to draw closer to God, That catches my attention. I don't know what happened that morning, but I can appreciate. And I want to celebrate every morning, every time, when people find a new way forward. Wherever the person is, whatever they believe about tombs or gods or Jesuses or any of that stuff. We've been on a series and we've looked at someone who was spiritual but not religious. We've looked at someone who was religious but not very spiritual. We've looked at people who have this close, tight church family. And we've looked at people who... Honestly, when they think of church, they think of boredom and brokenness and baggage. Wherever they are, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, Easter is this compass that points to an eternal truth. It means, Easter means that all things can be made new, that all things, in fact, will be made new in their way. Through pain and death and suffering and betrayal, through stress and anxiety, accusation, through guilt and shame and imbalance in our life, through all things that life can throw at us, Easter matters because you, you can find something in your life that's enriching. Because you can find something in your life more significant and more joyful. You can be made new. And as Mary said, I have seen the Lord. And may God be working in this place and in our hearts. Amen.